Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In a desert land he found him, in a barren and howling waste. He shielded him and cared for him. He guided, he guarded him as the apple of his eye. Like birds hovering overhead, he will shield Jerusalem. He will shield it and deliver it. He will pass over it and will rescue it. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. The owl will nest there and lay eggs. She will hatch them and care for her young under the shadow of, of her wings. There also the falcons will gather, each with its mate. Shadow of your wings. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. How priceless is your unfailing love, O oh God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his You will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wing you have come to take refuge. Jerusalem, stone those who sent you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wing, and you were not willing. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ryan. I'm doing in a series called Look at the Birds. We took a break last week. Uh, we had Tim Bird Lamini with us. I hope he was a blessing to you. Um, I was in Cape Town. I spent some time with, um, with Jubilee Community Church, which is a church that's really special to me. I don't know what it was now, but perhaps a year ago, and he was a real help to us. And so I went over to go and help with some leadership stuff. Uh, and it was just a wonderful time. The church has been through so much change, and so it's just good to be with them and encourage them. Uh, but this morning, we are continuing in our... Um, uh, this, this, um, this series is meant for us to be looking at the birds in, in nature and in the Bible and to be learning from them. So I hope you've been doing lots of bird watching over the last couple of weeks and looking at birds and through um, these amazing animals. Martin Luther, the great reformer, said, you see, he is making the birds our schoolmasters and teachers. In other words, we have as many teachers and preachers as there are little birds in the air. And so, he teaches us through uh, these amazing animals in his word and in nature. And this morning, I want to look at one verse, just one verse, but that one verse has got a long history that builds up to it. And so we had to read through all of those Old Testament verses to get uh, a it says in the New Testament about being gathered under his wings. So we're just going to look at one verse with its um, Old Testament context. So Matthew 23, if you have a Bible, verse 37. We're just going to look at this one verse. How often? And Jesus says this to a city. He says it to Jerusalem. He's probably saying this to us in our context right now. How often I have longed to gather you, your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. So three things that's happening um, as Jesus gathers us. He is calling us to himself. Number two, he is telling us who we are being gathered to. We've been gathered to a divine king, a Messiah. And then number three, there's a patient call to come to him. So the invitation, the reveal, and Jesus uses this well, well-known Old Testament metaphor of being gathered under the wings of a bird. It's a metaphor that's used throughout the Old Testament of a bird hovering, of people gathering under the shadow of 
uh, God's wings. It's used to obviously saying that God has got wings. That's not what it's saying at all. It's talking about how people relate to God. And so it's a rich illustration for two primary things. It's two primary things it's communicating. It's communicating that God provides shelter and that God people. So firstly, when, 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 a, when, when mother hens lay eggs, or when ducks lay eggs, they, they incubate their eggs by sitting on them, and they keep the eggs warm, they provide shelter for the eggs, and, uh, and, and, and sometimes between the, 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 little, the little, um, little egg and the, the elements outside, the, the, the little duck or the chicken absorbs all the harsh environment. Everything outside is absorbed by this, by this little bird. And so the, the, the bird is the thing that provides warmth and shelter to the, to the little baby. And that's a picture of what Jesus does. He, he is the one that comes between us and, and the harsh circumstances out in the world often. That's what it's saying. He shelters us. And uh, the, these birds are actually very brave. I remember once um, I, was, I was walking at school on a field, and I, I, I started walking. I saw a bunch of birds, and I just I kept walking on the school field. All of them flew up, bar one, and this one just looked at me like from the side like that. You know, I wasn't paying attention, I just kept walking, and the next thing flies up into the sky and starts swooping down at me, and it's like a horror movie. Another one comes from nowhere and starts attacking me, and I just, you know, ran away. These things are brave because this bird was protecting its young, it's protecting a So God does in our own lives, provides shelter and warmth. Listen, the warmest place, I'm speaking to the online people right now, the warmest place on a Sunday morning. Is in the house of God, is in the presence of God. He 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 does. Come to me. You're feeling cold. Come to me. I will provide shelter. I'll protect you from things out there. I'll pro- protect you from the circumstances. There are some ducks that will sit dead still, even if an intruder comes their way. They'll sit dead still. They'll be camouflaged. They'll them, literally bumps up against them or bites them, they won't move. Such bravery. That's what God is saying. Listen, I'm the one that's brave. I'm the one that will protect. I'm the one that will provide. I'm the one that you can find shelter in. And uh, He does this in our lives. All us. And then secondly, once the egg hatches, the, the bird is still vulnerable. The little baby is still vulnerable. And so the little baby has to, has to stay close to the parent. The, the mother stays close to them. And so often, even after they've hatched, they provide warmth for them and comfort. Even after they've hatched, even as they, they're busy getting a little bit old, older, they'll still have to stay close to their mother. And the mother will provide warmth. And shelter. I've seen um, a, a duck once, and, uh, and she also just, you know, just have. That's a picture of how we, we, when we even start, you know, there's a new beginnings course. But as we start, we still need to stay close. We still need the protection. We still need the warmth and the comfort of the mother. Uh, and sometimes birds will even get aggressive. Um, the swans, in particular, swans and geese. They'll actually kind of stick their chest out. They'll open up their wings to make themselves seem larger than they are. They take the power stance sometimes like men uh, and stick their chest out. And uh, they, they kind of tap each other with their wings. They'll clap. With their, there's a four-ways um, goose uh, duck. <laughs> they'll, they'll clap with their wings like that. Uh, and, and, and so the wings speak to protection. The wings are a symbol that God is, is he's protecting you warm and safe. He does that. If you come to him, if you're in Christ, if you, if you say today, Listen, I want to put my faith in Jesus Christ, he will protect you from the harsh realities around you. He does that. It's a promise. But, but, he'll, but he'll also defend you. He's also the one that shield in a rampart. Psalm 91 captures it so beautifully. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with His feathers. He'll cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. 
ramparts. Psalm 91 provides a picture of a God who protects us. That's, that's throughout the psalm. That's what it's about, this God that's mighty, that's strong, that's, that's protecting us. And, and it's like this, this, this bird that covers you. you, you you're covered. You're protected. You're inside. You. So, and so this, the feathers of this big bird covers you and, and provides a shield and a rampart from everything outside. All, all, the, the, all that the enemy would, would have for you to, that would destroy you, you are protected from it. You, you are shielded from it. Sometimes of the harsh realities. Sometimes you do experience something of the hawks that are around or the eagles, the vultures, the birds of prey. You experience something of it, but not the fullness of it because you were protected. I'm still standing today, even though I've been through all sorts of because I was protected. I was covered. You were protected. He was a shield and a rampart to you. That's why you are here. That's why you will make it home. You're protected by him. We have a common enemy, all of us, Satan, and, and he's and and he's all astray. He's trying to attack us. Some of you ex- experienced horrible things. You've tasted some horrible things, but it was only it was only a fraction of what actually was happening because you were protected, right? You experienced a sense of man. I don't know how I made it through that. I don't know. I'm still standing. I was beating down, but it wasn't the fullness of the heat because I was protected. There was a thunder and it was and it, and it was roaring, but but it wasn't the fullness of the storm that I was in because I somehow was carried through the storm. I was protected as wave upon wave of somehow mercy upon mercy strengthened me. I was protected. I was covered. That's the picture of Psalm 91 of this of this bird that you're covered in. You're protected by. Bible over and over says, listen, there is this enemy, but Jesus has come to morning that Jesus has over, overcome the enemy. But that actually starts right at the beginning. The first time the gospel is preached is in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. You know that verse well, right? It says, listen, the, the enemy is going to bruise his head, but his heel, sorry, but Jesus is going to crush the head of the serpent. Do you remember that verse? And then after a while, we, we, we are told when Jesus first arrives and he, and he starts his ministry, the first thing he does, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness. Why? To be tempted by Satan. In other words, he's led. It's, it's coming true now. It's head crushing time, dude. It's on. I'm here and I've come to overthrow you. That's what he's doing. That why does the Holy Spirit lead him into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan? Because he's come to overthrow Satan. The, our great enemy, he's come to take him down. That's like higher, 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 lift Jesus higher. Lower, 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 stamp Satan lower. That's why we sing it. And then, and then Colossians tells us that on the cross, he was disarmed. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. By the cross. You don't need to appease any God. Anything in the spiritual realm. You don't need to fear the great serpent because Jesus has come to defeat him. He's come to, to, to bind him up, to lead him in a, in a triumphal procession. He's come to, to put an end to the works of the enemy. In our lives, you don't, you don't need to first and my hex. Has someone said a prayer that, that's, that's against me? No, no, no. Jesus has conquered the enemy, the enemy of Satan and his demons, their works and effects. Everything has been taken care of at the cross. And the day is coming, Jesus says at the end in Revelation. And will be thrown into the lake of fire and it will be done for. It will be over. Jesus has come to protect us. He's not only come to protect us, from the enemy of Satan. He's come to protect us from the enemy of sin. Sometimes, when, 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 when you, before I became a Christian, I just couldn't. And they were destructive in my life. And I came to Christ, and all of a sudden, they lost their shine, and they became resistible. He does that. We're covered. Sometimes, even as Christians, we try and break out of the covering, and then the, he pulls us back into the, into the, into the covering. He says, no, no, no. 
go after. He pulls you back. Some, there are moments where you lose your mind and you're thinking clearly, right? And you want to, you know, go to the clubs again or you make a phone call and they don't pick up somehow or the club is closed. The father just pulls you back and says, no, 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 come back here. I'm coming. Sometimes we have those moments where we just lose our, you know, we're not thinking clearly and, uh, and, and we're covered from ourselves. I'm protecting you from sin. I'm protecting you from Satan. I'll protect you from, from things that will destroy you. And so here we have a picture of Jesus protecting us. Here's the invitation. I will love you. I'll protect you. I'll gather you in. I'll gather you in. You'll be amongst other, others who have been gathered in also. There's a group of us. We're all been gathered in. Little chicks. We form, we're part of the church, part of the people of God gathered. He shields us. He's your shield. He's your rampart. He's the one who looks after you. That's the back story. That's all of these Old Testament promises is all built into this illustration, this metaphor of Jesus saying, listen, you come to me, I'll put you under. There is nothing else. There is nothing else in all creation that we could turn to that will protect us and that will shelter us like Jesus can. Everything else that we turn to will eventually disappoint us. It will use us. We'll, we'll turn to it. To all sorts of career success, you can say, oh man, I'm just going to work so hard. You know, you're traveling all the time, and you're busy, and you're exhausted, and you've got no time for, 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 for the things of God. You've got no time for people in your life. And, and it, it will actually take more than it ever promises. It will take to children. Some people, we, we build our, our whole identities around our kids, but our kids will disappoint us. If, if, if not in the teenage years, then, you know, before that, they'll, they'll disappoint. They'll, they'll, they're, they're not God. They can't carry the weight of the freight of all of your hope. Or it will be like your God disappointing you. You can't turn to anything else. Beauty. You can't turn to beauty. You can't make this like, if I'm just beautiful, if I, if I prioritize this, I will be safe. I will be protected for my whole life. No, listen, it will obsess you. It will, t- it will take more. Who is truly self-sacrificial, who protects you. Who's like the mother hen that gathers you in, that sits between you and the harsh environment. And ultimately, we know this because he died on the cross for us. Nobody else did that for me. Nobody else did that for you. He's the, the invitation. Number two, the reveal. Because this is essentially about Jesus revealing himself to Jerusalem. It's kind of the transition to the last part of the Gospels. He sets his face to Jerusalem. And as he sets his face to Jerusalem, he's speaking openly about who he is. He kept it secret. He said to people, don't tell them what's happened. He keeps it a secret. Now it's not a secret anymore. And he comes to them and he reveals himself. And basically what he's saying when he does this is, the Messiah is here. The God-man, the promised one has. That's what he's saying. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the Messiah theme is as popular as it has ever been. The Messiah theme is as hot as it's ever been. You know, when you look at the movies, superhero movies are trend. They have. Superhero movies are so cool. Everybody loves it. People really love superhero movies. People are genuinely upset when Iron Man, when Robert Downey Jr. couldn't come back as Iron Man. Like, people are like, like People are really upset. Like people like Black Panther, people are going crazy. It's amazing. Like the Messiah rose to protect us. They trend. They 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 they're popular. You know whether it's Neo taking down the Matrix or Jason Bourne or the indestructible John Wick Part 140. (laughs) You know it's still trending. Kids movies. You know there's 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 the the, the, the king or the queen or the princess. There's so many Disney movies about the, the good princess or the strong king that comes as a messiah to protect. People love that kind of thing. Whether it's uh, about the, the duchess and the, the royal family breaking news all the time, or whether it's the aristocracy in KZN, people love messiah figures. They love it. You know why? Can I tell you why? It's a memory trace, something built to be saved and rescued 
and respond in worship to a Messiah. And Jesus comes to Jerusalem like he comes to Joburg, and he says, listen, I've arrived. Your Messiah, the one who comes to save you. has." People often say, I've heard people say this often, like, where does Jesus actually say he's God? Yeah, yeah, right here. Here's one good example where he says he's God. Let me show you. This theme, this illustration, this metaphor is only ever used of God throughout the Bible. It's only ever used. Example, Psalm 61 verse 4. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. That's a reference to God, right? The psalmist is saying, I long to dwell in God's tent. God's shelter that's what he's saying. It's a, it, and, and when Jesus comes along and Jesus says, come under my wings, he's saying, listen, this is the backstory. You've heard the psalmist speak about it. Now I am here. You can come and take refuge under the shelter of the God-man. Genesis chapter 1, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It's clearly a reference to God. The one who created all things. And so when Jesus comes along and he says, listen, come and come and, 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 and um, come under my wings. You can, I'll, I'll be hovering over you. You can come. God. When, Jesus, when, when the, uh, the prophet Isaiah says, like birds hovering overhead, the Lord Almighty will shield Jerusalem. It sounds almost very much like what Jesus says a couple of years later over Jerusalem. Come and, come and hover. He's claiming to be God in every, in every case. When he says to them, they know their Bibles. When, when he says to them, come under my wings, he is saying to them that God has come. Jesus Christ is divine. He's the second person of the Trinity. He is God. Not like a normal human being. He's not just a, a, a person. It doesn't matter what revisionist history historians want to say about him. He is God. And, and, and he comes to us and he says, listen, you need to accept me on those terms. Once you move past the theological, did he claim to be God? Yes, he did. You need to get to the next step and say, okay, I receive you as God in my life. It's like, you know, if I, if I said, uh, come, come in, Reagan, but stay out, Skiles. You know, it, it doesn't really work. Reagan Skyle goes together. You, you, you get him with a whole package. You, you, you can't say, listen, I, I, like, I like your dancing, but I don't like your jokes. With Reagan, you get good dancing and good jokes. It's a whole package. It's a package deal. So, so, so Jesus says, listen, I, I'm full of grace. I'm full of love. I sympathize with you, but I'm also God. I also am your king. I'm also your Lord. I, I, you need to submit to me. It's a package deal. And they won't submit to him because they don't want to, they don't want to submit. They want to, they want to say, listen, you're God. That, that's the thing that gets him crucified. I've longed to gather you as a, as a mother hen gathers the chicks, but you will not. But you will not. You won't submit. You won't, you won't, you won't bend your own will to him. And they get it wrong. They get it wrong. I don't know if you've ever gotten it wrong with somebody. Like, this person's just horrible, and it turns out they're super amazing. And, uh, or the person you thought was super amazing is actually, you know, they, they didn't stick around. Have you ever been surprised who stuck around, who helped you in your time of need? And you're like, whoa, no ways. I totally got it wrong. You know, and you got it wrong. I've gotten it wrong so many times. The person that I thought, then it was somebody else. And they got it wrong about Jesus. They got it wrong. They, 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 they looked at him and they thought, listen, uh, yeah, we know the Messiah is coming, but, but we were expecting something different. Expecting somebody who was uh, God, a human being, claiming to be the very Son of God. Jesus says to them, but if you would just be willing to submit to me as King, as Lord, you'd know the comfort. You know that he doesn't actually leave us. Is that often people will say, yeah, I follow him as a good teacher. He's a good example to me. I'm a Jesus fan. But he says, I need you to be a follower. I need you to worship me. I need you to come and go all in for the things of God. There isn't a third option available to us. Receive him as king. 
and, and, and come and experience the shelter and the comfort that you and I were created to experience, or you reject him and you walk away. They chose the latter. They crucified him. C.S. Lewis puts it this way. He says, where men they honor millionaires, athletes, prostitutes, or gangsters, for spiritual nature, like bodily nature, will be served, deny it food, and it will gobble poison. What he's saying is that you and I are constituted to work, to have a Messiah, to be saved. That's, he's saying that's why superhero movies will trend. He's saying, listen, we were just made that way, and if we don't worship Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, we will find something else. We will find some sort of substitute. A couple of years ago, there was a product on uh, the American shelves, and um, it, it wasn't FDA approved, and everybody thought it was FDA approved, and there was a, some sort of administrative error, and people started getting heart attacks because of this medicine, and uh, the FDA got involved, and they realized was actually harmful. And so often the pseudo messiahs in our lives, the things that we think are helpful, actually end up harming us. That we're gobbling poison. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me and you will know life. You will know shelter. And you will know protection. There's a call. This is the, the last thing that comes through in this passage. There's a constant call coming to me. I don't know if you saw that. How often, how often, I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you will. I've longed. He's willing. And it comes over and over again. God doesn't just call us once. It's not just a once off thing. He keeps calling you. He says, Come, come to me. He calls you over and over again. In my experience, sometimes He calls you through difficult things. Sometimes you lose a job and God's trying to get your attention. I'm trying to call you to myself. Sometimes uh, so, something goes wrong and somebody, somebody challenges you and God's trying to just challenge you and go, hey, listen, won't you just listen up? I'm trying to get your attention. He's calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. Sometimes we wonder, how does God speak to me? You'll know when God speaks to you. Until he gets your attention. And, and you'll know when he's trying to get your attention. You'll actually have to resist him. He says, how often? How often? I'm, he keeps coming back again and again. He keeps calling there are um, chickens at my, at, at my kids' schools. And uh, they, don't just, they, they, they don't just cluck once or twice. At the beginning, when you're far away, they say, they'll buck, buck, right? But if you get closer to them, they'll start, they'll start talking a lot. And if you get right up there to them, especially when they've got the young ones with them, they just go ballistic. That's what God is like a bit, not figuratively, not, not literally, right? He'll keep calling to you. He'll keep going, yes, no, 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 not that way, not that way. I'm, I'm trying to get your attention, to, like really, really not that way. Right now, you know God's speaking to you. He's been speaking to you, and he's calling you. You need to stop. You need to listen. You need to go, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to do what you're saying. I need to do. He calls us like a bird, keeps on calling. He looks at us like he. And I've longed, I've longed to, to gather you often. And, and then, you know, I, it, it's, inter it's interesting to me that it's a mother hen. That's the illustration that's been used. It's a mother hen. And I don't know what your experience of, 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 of a mother has been. My experience one of, was one of the only people that I never felt judged by. She could say whatever she wanted to me. You know, she could correct me. She could challenge me. Um... But I knew she did it because she loved me. Even though I disagreed with her, there would, sometimes she would cry. You know, crying in a room or praying for me. So I never, I always knew that she cares. Everything that came from her, this is what Jesus is saying. This is what he's like. I think this is at the heart of what he's like. In another part of the Bible, in Luke chapter 19, uh, it gives us a different part of the Jerusalem, you know, you know it well. He cries over the city, right? He cries over the city. He comes with, with a confrontation. He says, listen, you're not coming to me. Then he cries. When somebody confronts you and then they cry, you see, they're, not, they're not judging you. Disagree with what they're saying. But he comes crying 
over us. He comes with tears calling us again and again and again out of love, out of a place of concern, trying to get our attention. And so I think the first call over here, the first call, the call of God. You're following Him and you love Him and you're worshiping Him. But perhaps He's calling you to imitate Him and cry over the city of Joburg and call the city of Joburg to Himself and follow in His example of bringing renewal to If you cry over the city, I wonder if you shed tears for this nation in prayer. I wonder if you are so burdened for the lost that you, that, that you find yourself, you know, finding creative ways. You put your personal testimony on a track to give it to somebody that you come across. To bring people to Christ. I feel like he's calling some of us to, to follow his example of crying over the city and calling the city and being bold enough out of a place of love and concern to say, come, I disagree with what you are doing. Your lifestyle is destructive. Come to that's the first call and I feel like some of us have been hearing the call and we need to respond to the call he's calling you to greater leadership he's calling you to carry more responsibility in the city and to make a bigger difference I think there's a second call though and the second call is to receive him as as Lord I receive you as my Lord I receive you as my Savior and sometimes when we don't we you know we, we don't feel ready I remember not feeling ready to do that Perhaps you in that space, you're like, I'm, I, you know, I'm a fan, but I'm not ready to be a follower. And it's like driving in a car, but not choosing a lane. And you can think that not choosing a lane is not choosing a lane, but actually not choosing a lane is choosing a lane. Because you can't stop your life. Like you can't stop the car. If you drive down nickel when you don't. And so the call to you is to respond. How often I've wanted to gather you, he says to you. Come, let today be the day of salvation. Don't, don't put it, oh, when I'm a bit older, I'll do it, I'll, I'll come to Jesus. Or, you know, when I get this. No, come to him. Come to him, come to him now. You don't need to sort out your life. He will sort out your life. You, you don't need to, you know, find protection. No, he will protect you. He will be the shelter. Come to him. And then I think there's another call in this passage. And the last call is calling you to, to, to deeper intimacy. He's calling you to turn, turn your back on some things that you know you need to be turning. He's been speaking to you about some things, and, and you need to come to him. Come to him. Say no to sin. Uh, uh, my, my dad was a, he's a mechanic and spray paint. Like workshops all over the Cape Flats. And um, if you know anything about the Cape Flats, these little workshops, they're not like big workshops. They always have dogs around. And when the dogs are young in these mechanics' workshops, they're scared and they're skittish. And the mechanical hits some. Will river car, zom, 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 and the dogs will run away, the young ones. When you come back a couple of months later or a year later to the same mechanics' workshop, and the dog doesn't run away, in years the bag, but doesn't run away. The dog hears the car raving, doesn't run away. Why? The, the dog's got in the car and banging and all sorts of things. And so often, what once startled us when God spoke, when we become accustomed to hearing it over and over again, can lose its impact. And so he says to us, be startled once again. Don't, don't grow accustomed to hearing truth and not responding. He's saying that to Jerusalem, how often I've longed to gather you, but you would not come. Come to him. Obey his call. One that we need to submit to. One that we need to say, oh, joyfully, I just want to lay my life down and I'll be obedient to you. And when we do that, whenever we do that, it leads to fruit, it leads to growth, it leads to protection, and love in our lives. Let's stand together, worship together.